Mr. Minister, thank you very much for those very uh, helpful and uh, illuminating remarks. Um, and we also thank you for being willing to uh, answer some questions uh, uh, from me, my colleague Jacob Kierkegaard, and our audience. They will be very interested to uh, uh, ask you for some further uh, elaboration on the points you make. Um, I would also like to introduce two of your colleagues that are joining us on the, uh, on the platform. Mr. George Zanias, the chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors of the Government of Greece, and Mr. Petros Christodoulou, the general director of the Public Debt Management Office. The key Point person in, in Greece, Mr. Mr. Christodoulou, is the first <laughs> responsible for the situation. <laughs> he will get many questions, I am sure. Um, Mr. Minister, let me start off by asking you a bit about the domestic politics of this issue in Greece. Yes. You have outlined the very ambitious uh, adjustment program, reform program that your government has adopted. Um, you've now agreed with your European colleagues and I presume with the International Monetary Fund to carry out that program. Uh, we're all aware, we read the newspapers, we watch television, we have noticed that uh, there has not always been unanimous support for your program at home. So talk to us about the domestic politics. How will you be able to ensure effective implementation of the program? Do you anticipate that there will be widespread support now that the package has been put together in, uh, in Brussels last week? Uh, give us your uh, assessment of how it is uh, going to play out in Athens and throughout the country. Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity. As you know very well, the main difference between the United States and Greece on the institutional level is that uh, in Greece we have uh, a traditional parliamentary system of governance within the institutional frame <coughs> of uh, a European continental parliamentary system uh, the relationships between uh, government, uh, governmental majority in the parliament, and the opposition, first of all, the so-called major opposition, the main party of the opposition, is uh, always very controversial. Because this, controversi this uh, contradiction is vital for the existence of uh, the opposition. Uh, during a conventional period, we are ready to accept this rule and this practice. But uh, during a period of uh, historical and existential crisis, it's absolutely necessary, both for the government and for the opposition, to organize a common national platform for the reconstruction of the state, of the civil society, of the national economy, and also of the brand name of our nation. Uh, here in Washington, D.C., I am the representative not only of the Greek government and the Greek ruling party, but also for the Greek political system. I am here also as a representative of the opposition. And uh, I speak before us not only on behalf of uh, my friends of PASOK, but also of my friends of uh, New Democracy and the other parties of the opposition. We have some very important and very constructive proof of consensus. For example, during the last main voting in the parliament about the privatization program, the majority was very vast, it was a majority of uh, two-thirds. And this message, the message of consensus, the message of uh, co-responsibility and of cooperation, was very useful and very fruitful for our work and for our negotiation during this last summit in Brussels, and also very useful for the construction and the approval of the new program. Uh, we have, without doubt, uh, a problem of social cohesion. 
we have problem with the public opinion. It's very difficult to implement uh, a program with sacrifices. It's very difficult to cut revenues. It's very difficult to reduce pensions. It's very difficult to organize the new opportunity for the country through a huge unemployment. <coughs> it's very difficult to, to present a new national narration before the young generation. And uh, because of that, we need the so-called national unity in Greece. In Greece, we talk very often about national unity. National unity is the political consensus and about social cohesion. Social cohesion is the strong core of the necessary sensitivity for the implementation of a strong policy with perspective, with hope for the future. This is something very, very important. I don't believe in the linear approach of the history, but uh, we must reestablish the hope and perspectives for new generation. This is absolutely necessary, and this is a historical message, a national message. It's not a message from the government, but uh, a message from the Hellenic nation to the international community. And uh, this meeting, thanks to you, is a great opportunity for me on behalf of the Greek nation to send this very clear, this crystal clear message. And this is a message of commitment because without this political and national commitment, without delivery, without the strong and systematic implementation of the program, it's not possible for us to present results and also to preserve the necessary support from the international community. The commitment, the delivery, the execution of the program, the implementation is uh, our contribution in this very huge and very ambitious program. Thank you. Thank you very much. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned the privatizations, and I'd like to ask a little more about that uh, as one specific element of your program. Um, the IMF and others have estimated that you have a very large amount of assets that might possibly be privatized, uh, much more, in fact, than your programs have included so far. So uh, looking for optimistic possibilities. Is this an area where you might overperform, where you might uh, uh, be able to uh, raise more revenues and achieve more this success? Is, this is my personal target. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. How do you see the privatizations, the timing? What elements would, uh, would be in the forefront of that effort? The privatization program is, first of all, a program of structural changes. The Greek state, it does the Greek uh, public sector, is a traditional one with uh, unacceptable dimensions according a modern model for the organization of the state and the public sector. The program of privatization of public entities of entities of the so-called general government sector, the wider public sector, is a, a program of structural changes because we need uh, a more clever, more functional, and less expensive state. This program of privatization as program of structural changes is uh, absolutely vital for our budget and also absolutely viable in order to achieve the main fiscal target for primary surplus as soon as possible from the next year. But we have also the commitment and the obligation to contribute in the program for the financial needs of our country during the period until 2014, until July 2014 because the new program has three main pillars. The first main pillar 
is the new official support from Eurozone, from ECB, from EFSF, and also from IMF. The second pillar is the private sector involvement. The third pillar is our own contribution through privatization. We need an amount of uh, 28 billion euros uh, uh, by July 2014 for uh, financial reasons, but also for structural reasons. We have also a second stage, an additional amount of uh, 22 billion euros from 2014 until 2015. The second stage, the second chapter, is also very important for uh, financing the new debt buyback mechanism. This new mechanism, under the auspices of uh, EFSF, is a very important mechanism because we need a cut, a reduce of the nominal burden of our public debt. The list of privatization is very ambitious, but also very functional. I can make uh, another distinction between privatization of entities, of uh, so-called public companies, or of public rights, and the privatization on the very attractive field of the real estate, because uh, the property of uh, the state is very huge. We have some estimations, very ambitious, and we have also a very big uh, real estate uh, property uh, of uh, uh, private entities. Uh, and uh, this field, the field of uh, uh, real estate, is also very important for foreign investors in Greece in combination with uh, our main uh, sectors of our real economy. I start always with tourism, uh, but also for energy, on, on, on the field of energy. Uh, the privatization program is uh, uh, very, very attractive. Uh, and also we can organize new, new fields. We can prepare new offers, <laughs> but we have, uh, we take the role of seller, we need buyers because in order to construct uh, a new uh, market, it's absolutely necessary to organize these uh, relationships between offer and demand. And because of that, this occasion is very important for me to make this public announcement uh, before an uh, American audience of high quality because we need not only the support of our European partners, but also the support from the United States, and first of all, the support of uh, our Greek-American people here in Washington, D.C. and in the United States. So all those who would like to buy can come up to the front uh, at the end of the meeting. Uh, we at the Institute will ask only for a 10 percent finder's fee as uh, part of the arrangement, Mr. Minister. Uh, let me just ask one more question, then we'll open it up. Um, the European summit last week, we here thought made a major shift mm -hmm. because up till that point, the focus seemed to be almost totally on austerity, on trying to uh, bring austere policies into place. But last week, the, uh, the summit talked about a comprehensive strategy for growth and investment in Greece trying to encourage some of the things you said in your remarks about getting the economy growing again. Elaborate a bit on that. How soon do you realistically see a prospect for resuming positive growth and with the kind of pro-competitive steps that you're trying to take? What might be a reasonable growth rate to expect for Greece <laughs> over the coming okay. five years or so? As you know, austerity is the bad name for financial and fiscal reconstruction, yeah. and also for the competitiveness of uh, our state and of our national economy. But uh, uh, for the needs of uh, this discussion, I can use, like you, the term austerity. 
Austerity is the precondition for our final target. Our final target uh, is to achieve uh, our uh, financial independence and also to re-establish the brand name of Greece. Without a sustainable public debt, it's not possible to implement a program of austerity or of reconstruction and competitiveness with result and with perspectives. We need a sustainable public debt in order to preserve the sacrifices of uh, Greek people and also of the Greek uh, uh, national economy. And now we have a very important and very constructive common understanding with uh, our partners with uh, Eurozone, with European Commission, with ECB, with IMF, about uh, the need and the priority to make the Greek public debt sustainable. And now we have new instruments, new measures, new guarantees for the sustainability of Greek public debt. This is the precondition for the successful implementation of the austerity program. On the other hand, the privatization program is uh, the program of structural changes and also a very important uh, fund, so-called fund, for uh, this new date-back mechanism and, and also for uh, uh, the necessary breakthrough because without new elements and new instruments, it's not possible to make, to organize this breakthrough. Okay, let me ask my colleague Jacob Kierkegaard if he has a follow-up question, and then we'll open it up to the floor. Well, thank you, Fred, and thank you, <coughs> Mr. Minister, for your <coughs> uh, candid set of remarks. I guess just following up on, on Fred's question regarding uh, the prospects for growth, you mentioned the, 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 uh, the Marshall Plan and, and perhaps as much as $20 billion available uh, from the European Commission structural funds and the invest uh, European investment banks with very limited, uh, if any, in fact, uh, domestic Greek co-financing requirements. So I, I guess I'm wondering if you could be slightly more specific about how are you going to make this money go to work? What is the sectors that you envision where actually you could have the maximum growth enhancing impact uh, of 20 billion, or as you mentioned, up to 20 billion euros? Is it solar energy? Is it, is it infrastructure investments? What, what are the, some of the sectors where we can expect the Greek government to, to try to put these uh, money to work to kickstart growth? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I have two points. The first point is that the new elements of uh, the public discussion in, within the European Union about the so-called uh, European Marshall Plan for Greece is that according to the new rules of the European Union, especially for Greece, we can use the European funds without national contribution for the first period, for, for the next five years. This is very important for our budget and also for our real economy. This is the main new element, the possibility to use European funds without Greek national contribution. This is the main change. The second point is about the sectors. Uh, the first uh, sector, the first field, is always the different infrastructures. Because we have until now some deficits on infrastructures. Uh, the second field is without doubt energy. The third, tourism. And uh, of course, we have uh, before us the great challenge for the real estate. I repeat the same answer. Uh, I don't know if my answer is, uh, is uh, clear for you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, the floor is open. Um, we've got two standing microphones. We've got the traveling mic. And so uh, please identify yourself and then fire away. Ian. Ian Talley, Dow Jones. Thank you for uh, taking the time to come here. Uh, so you, by your own estimates, uh, the debt SWAT would, would uh, reduce the debt to GDP ratio about 10 to 12 percentage points. 
uh, with the debt sustainability, or sorry, the debt to GDP ratio is supposed to peak at 172%. Uh, 12 percentage points would make it 160. I'm wondering how is that still sustainable? Uh, and then just wondering if you can give any timing on the bond swap uh, agreement. Um, and uh, did you officially ask the IMF for second loan today? Okay. Uh, I start with uh, your first question. This 12 percent of uh, debt buyback is the first contribution through the program. It's not uh, an independent pillar of this program, but the additional result for the implementation of this program. And uh, this is uh, uh, just the first step. The most important point is the creation of uh, a such mechanism under the auspices and with the necessary financial enhancement of EFSF. We can use other capitals for uh, a more ambitious debt buyback. And this is our ambition, this is our, uh, our target now. Uh, the 12 percent, it's not the final result of uh, the debt buyback operation, but just the first step, the first proof about the possibility to organize this operation in the secondary market. We have uh, uh, also some uh, other very important uh, buffers. Uh, we have the possibility to, to use the revenue from the second tranche of privatization program, 22 uh, billions after 2014. Uh, this is my, my, first, uh, my first answer, my first reaction. Uh, Mr. Because Minister, now, because now uh, if, if I may, the first point for us, the urgent uh, point, is to implement the new program, to organize as soon as possible the PSI. Uh, the PSI is uh, now under the Greek ownership for the organization of the procedure. We have the ownership of the procedure. In cooperation with our European partners, in cooperation with IMF, in cooperation with IIF, in cooperation with the coordinators and with our legal and financial advisor, we are ready to start as soon as possible because we must clarify the situation and we must implement the new scheme this is innovation. This is a totally new. And uh, because of that, we must cooperate with uh, all the critical factors, because without the mobilization of the international community and uh, with uh, the goodwill of uh, everybody, it's not possible to implement this ambitious program. This is our first obligation. The second target is to implement our own program uh, through the domestic political life in, in Greece. And just after, we can prepare the second, the third, and the other uh, steps. Uh, we must uh, go ahead, we must go ahead uh, on fast track, and uh, because of that, uh, I insist in the key word implementation delivery and uh, also readiness to implement this uh, new scheme because now we have a new momentum and to, we must exploit this moment. Uh, I have the impression that uh, Professor Zanias and Mr. Christodoulou uh, have the necessary knowledge and experience to give the answer for your next uh, second uh, uh, question about uh, the banking balance. Please, uh, Professor Zanias. If I can say something on the sustainability, and maybe then Petros can take it up from there. I think, as you said, uh, if we are going to start from a debt level of 170 percent, let's make the some gross, the gross, the gross, the gross debt. Because we must make also the distinction between gross and net debt. 
the, this is something very important for the viability and the sustainability of our public debt. Which is considerably lower and the markets also look at that. Now, if we take 22 percentage points out of that due to privatizations, this takes us to 148. Then if you take another 10 percentages due to debt buybacks, which is in, in the program, um, as well as uh, bond exchanges below par, this takes us to 138, 138. So we start from a stock level of 138 percent if we take all these one-offs. Then three variables work here, interest, primary surpluses, and growth. Okay, let's start with the interest. If you have seen in the newspapers, the, the net present value of the PSI, the private sector involvement, is about 21%. Now, I said 10% of that is b because of bond exchanges below par. The remaining 11% is lower interest rates. So, the private sector will, will contribute with somewhat lower interest rates. For example, for the next four or five years, I think uh, it's going to be around 4%. This is the agreement with the private sector. Now, the most important thing, however, that has to do with debt servicing um, and the interest rates applied to debt sustainability has to do with interest rates of the official sector of the EU. We have a little more than 100 billion now. 0.5%. One, a little more than 100 billion, which uh, will be given, this is a little less than one third of the debt, which will be given to us at a rate of 3.5%. Then we have another about 40% from last year's program, which will also be at 3.5%. So we're talking about at least 40% of the debt that is going to have an interest rate of 3.5%. We're talking about Greece here borrowing as a AAA country, 3.5%. Through EFSF. Through EFSF, of this course. Is, this is the enhancement. And we still have some buffers, as the minister uh, said. Uh, buffers, uh, for example, we have already borrowed 50 billion from the official sector, which is not at lower interest rates, but may come later. If this comes in, then we're talking about 60% of the Greek debt at 3.5 currently, plus you know the lower interest rates from the private sector. Now let me go to the second variable that affects sustainability. This is the primary surplus. <laughs> primary surplus, it was at uh, uh, one and a half year ago minus 10%. At the end of this year, it's going to be minus 0.8%, almost cl very close to zero. This change of uh, nine, more than nine percentage points in uh, two years took uh, place in uh, an environment of severe recession. If you take the cyclically adjusted um, uh, primary uh, surplus, then you will see that this takes us to about two point plus 2.5%. So in real terms, we're talking about 12.5 percentage points change in, in two years. We are aiming at reaching 5.5 to 6 percent. We are 4.3 to 4 points away. And that will cover this distance only within the first two um, uh, years. If you look at other countries, for example, the UK has primary surplus at the end of the year minus 3.5 percent. Um, I don't know, Ireland uh, minus 5 or whatever, number of countries. So we're making a lot of progress uh, here, too. And then let's take growth. Now, growth is probably the most important variable. Where can this come from? I think there are at least four advantages that Greece has over the average of the Eurozone. The first advantage is that Greece has been the most regulated economy in Europe, probably the last communist country in Europe. I can tell you many examples about that. Well, yeah, we must avoid, we must avoid that. So, <laughs> so the, the thing is, uh, I can give you a number of examples. For example, the number of pra public transportation trucks today is the same with, an, with the 1971. That is 40 years. You, you know how many times GDP has increased since then. And a number of all these are liberalized now, for example. So the impact uh, of uh, deregulation in the economy uh, is the first uh, source uh, over and above the, the average of the Eurozone. The second thing is that Greece is the country with the greatest state ownership in, uh, and, and intervention, public intervention in, in Europe. 
Now, by selling all these assets, we are introduced, apart from reducing the stock of debt, we're introducing efficiency also in the economy. No other country in Europe has this advantage that Greece has. Then, for example, we have the lowest labor participation in Europe. I mean, I think uh, between uh, six or seven percentage points that are lower than the average in the EU. And I'll give you an, a fourth factor that I think can contribute a lot. We have the largest underground economy. Why this may be an advantage? Because this is a big potential pool for to where to pull resources from, and in this way lowers the average taxation of the formal sector. So I think for these thank reasons, you. thank you. Uh, one, the answer to your uh, last question about the uh, PSI and the time frame. Uh, you appreciate that uh, such an operation of monumental size is taking time to uh, put together. There are very many parties involved uh, in Europe uh, on this side of the pond. Um, and uh, I think by the uh, middle of this week, there will be a press release that will um, cover the main structure and body of the, um, the team that will uh, eventually carry out this effort. And the IMF loan request? I'm sorry? <laughs> He's <laughs> asking for the IMF loan request. If you, if you have made that request. There's not been a request, and even had there been a request, you wouldn't know it now anyhow. <laughs> so. It was, it's a good, good try. <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, it's Ben Potter from the Australian Financial Review. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I, I was late, so I may have missed it at the outset if you mentioned it, but I wondered what your reaction to the Moody's um, downgrading uh, Greece's sovereign debt rating to, I think, two notches beyond, uh, above default this morning uh, is. And um, I'm also curious to know in your privatisation uh, program, you include some, uh, I read... Uh, a year or two ago that you, uh, Greece had on order from a German, a German defense manufacturer some state-of-the-art military submarines, um, which uh, it, it was now uh, facing not being able to pay for, uh, and uh, my country um, uh, is proposing to spend a lot of money manufacturing uh, naval submarines domestically when uh, they could perhaps be buying them on the open market if they were available. So I'd be curious to know if you could confirm that you would be open to offers on those submarines. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, we can start with uh, your first question on Mundis. Uh, the new element is the very positive motivation of uh, the last announcement of Mundis. We have a, a new BAT uh, rating with uh, a very good and uh, hopeful motivation. Uh, because the international <laughs> financial uh, community understands very well and accepts the new scheme for, for the private uh, sector participation and also uh, the huge volume of uh, the new official support program. Uh, for, this tra uh, for the period of the transition from uh, the old program to the new, we have this, this problem with uh, uh, the rating agencies, but for the first time after many, many months, we have a positive and constructive approach for the perspectives of the Greek economy. And uh, this uh, point is something very important uh, for us, because for the first time after two years, we have a positive signals from the part uh, of uh, the international uh, financial community. This is something very, very important for us. Uh, it's, it's not possible for me to understand very well your second point on the submarines uh, program, but this is a very old story. It's not an initial choice, but uh, a huge effort to clarify uh, an old uh, uh, history and also to reorganize a uh, very important industrial sector in Greece. Uh, more generally speaking, our relationships with uh, the German industry is uh, very good, very constructive, 
and I am in contact with my counterpart, uh, Dr. Schäuble, in order to organize <coughs> the involvement of uh, Greek uh, private sector in uh, the so-called uh, European Marshall Plan. And we are waiting for uh, a similar participation from uh, the part of uh, the American private sector. This is, this is now uh, uh, the, new, the new field, the new challenge, and uh, our invitation, because we are here not only to make contacts and talks with uh, IMF, with Madame Lagarde, or with Secretary Geithner, with uh, the American administration, but also with the American private sector, because without uh, the real involvement of the American private sector, it's not, it's not, not possible for us to implement our program, to, to make delivery for the privatization, and also to, to achieve our financial uh, targets. This is my invitation, this is my commitment. It's a great opportunity for investors from the United States to, to participate in uh, this new era for us. Bill. <coughs> Mr. Minister, I think it was terribly important um, the indications you gave about the reduction of the debt ratio, uh, the indication you gave about the assets, so you need to look at the net. I think getting the story out about debt sustainability would be very helpful because I think the dominant view remains that the debt is unsustainable and that there will be another round of this a year from now. Um, the particular question I have, it's a little bit different, difficult to see how the program isn't overfinanced. Logically, the July IMF document had things working out. And it had basically the public sector was paying off amortization to the private sector. The new program has the same amount of public money coming in. It's got 10 year grace, so you don't have to worry about amortizing the public money. And you've tied up the private money. Mm -hmm. So it looks to me that like there's going to be a huge reserve fund because you're going to have more money than you need. Is it right to, un to interpret what you've said that you may be using some of that reserve fund to do buybacks? Or am I missing something? Well, yeah, if you uh, analyze the uh, new loan, the $109 billion, you see that in there you have some uh, deficit financing to cover. Uh, you have the money that we need to borrow to buy the great enhancement, that's $35 billion. And you have $20 billion for the uh, beefing up of the bank capital, uh, so the domestic financial um, stability fund will go from the, under the current scheme, $10 billion size to $30 billion size. And there will be the $20 billion minimum of uh, debt buybacks um, so that's, uh, that's all adding up to uh, 109. Now you appreciate these numbers were put together this past week with a sizable number of governments getting uh, sitting around the table and putting down some numbers. So you may be off two or three billion up or down in each one of these numbers, right? Uh, but um, the key thing is that in the moment of crisis, Europe did get together with so many governments and got some numbers on the table and got agreement to them. I uh, don't underestimate that. I know some other locations and jurisdictions where a single government cannot get their decision. <laughs> Jim? No, I, I, don't, I don't talk about this uh, country, but you know, in very many other jurisdictions. The new program, it's, it's not just a loan, but a more sophisticated and, and more complicated uh, 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 scheme, because we have uh, also uh, 45 uh, bill billion euros from, from the first uh, loan facility before the new mechanism and we need, we need also some capitals from, for the recapitalization of our banking system, a very traditional banking system without many exposures like uh, the Irish banking system and uh, finally we need the public support in order to organize the necessary enhancement for the private sector involvement. This is a very good and very balanced combination between public and private sector. 
this is, this is the new, the new uh, element, the new feature of uh, this program. And, and this is an innovation. Eh? We, 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 mu we must now implement a totally new model. Uh, and because of that, uh, uh, we have the necessary decisiveness, but uh, we need also the necessary know-how and expertise. And because of that, we are here today, uh, because uh, here we can uh, organize better <coughs> our relationships with uh, the economic and financial community globally. And uh, because of that, uh, after after uh, my meetings here in Washington, D.C., I am very optimistic about the implementation of the program and about the perspectives of uh, our efforts. Jim. Thank you, Fred. <clears throat> Jim Hoagland, Washington Post. Mr. Vice President, thank you for your presentation today. I wanted to ask you to expand on a couple of remarks that you've said specifically, but to do that, I wanted to ask you first about the general context of uh, the European aid package. It's often said that some countries in Europe, Germany is often named, uh, are actually trying to engineer a cultural change in Greece to make Greece more like northern European countries. Yeah. Is the general question, is that an acceptable goal for Greeks? The specific points have to do with your remarks about American uh, investors and transforming Greece into an investment-friendly country was the phrase you used. Could you tell us what it is about Greece today that is not uh, investor friendly, how you propose to change it, and how long it will take? Thank you very much. I start uh, uh, with uh, your first question, because uh, in my capacity as professor of uh, constitutional law, uh, it's uh, easier for me to give a practical and concrete uh, answer. The first problem is uh, the instability of the legislation, not only uh, about the taxation system, but also about uh, uh, the administration support. The administrative cost in Greece is very high. Uh, according to uh, the last estimation of uh, our main think tanks, the administrative cost uh, is about 10% uh, of, uh, of uh, GDP. Uh, the same with uh, the so-called uh, structural overspending. Uh, according to uh, the last uh, academic studies, this overspending is about 30% uh, in comparison with uh, the best uh, Western country. Um, in, in, uh, on this field. Uh, another very important uh, uh, factor is uh, uh, our uh, justice, the, the administration of justice. We need uh, a faster judicial system uh, with uh, some more flexible procedures. And uh, this is something also very, very important for uh, every <coughs> investor in Greece. Uh, stability of legislation, uh, a more clever and more flexible administration, and uh, a faster justice is the triangle of uh, our problem and uh, uh, the three priorities <coughs> in the list of our efforts for an uh, investment-friendly country. Uh, your uh, first uh, point is uh, the result of, of uh, your uh, very systematic uh, knowledge uh, on Greece. Uh, this uh, pedagogical approach from uh, the European Union is uh, obvious. Uh, as you know, Greece uh, is uh, a country between Occident and Orient. It's an orthodox country in uh, a European Union with uh, a more uh, uh, Protestant approach about economy and about discipline. Uh, we are absolutely open and ready to accept uh, 
other mentalities and other approaches, uh, we must preserve the necessary flexibility and also the necessary openness. But on the other hand, we need this discipline, we need uh, this more systematic approach, and now we are ready to organize uh, this combination, to incorporate uh, new elements and also to preserve and to modernize the traditional and structural element of our mentality. This is not a confrontation uh, uh, between two different cultures, but uh, without doubt, we must learn from uh, our participation in the European Union. And uh, uh, also, we must exploit this, uh, this opportunity in order to represent the profile of our country. Uh, Greece is the most important country for uh, holidays, but also a very productive uh, country, a country with very important uh, uh, possibilities, with a potential, uh, a productive pro potential, and uh, according the expression of, uh, of Professor Zanyas, we must transform our structural problems as advantages for the new era. This, this is our target now. This is a very complex target because we must work on the field of uh, the economy, on the field of our fiscal system, on the field of our public administration, on the field of our civil society, uh, on the field of uh, the national mentality. Uh, this is a historical effort, but uh, we are here uh, in order to implement a very difficult program and in order to achieve a difficult but not impossible mission. And this is also the motivation uh, for the acceptance of the proposal of the Prime Minister to, <laughs> uh, to appoint me as new Minister of Finance. Uh, after the experience of the Ministry of Defence, I am now uh, on the field of the real war. The real war is the economic war. And uh, I am here in order to win in this war. Oh, oh, on that note, Mr. Minister, <coughs> we have reached our closing hour. Apologies to those who had questions. We could go on all night, but we want to thank you very much. This has been extremely helpful. We appreciate your remarks, those of your colleagues. We thank you for joining us at this very intense time for you. We appreciate your candor. We wish you the best of success in carrying forward your program, in winning full cooperation from your partners around the world, certainly including here in the United States. And we look forward to continuing to work closely on this with you. Thank you enormously for this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>